your Bibles, please. Get your pen, pencils, and paper. Turn to Ephesians 2 and 10. Praise the Lord. When you have it, say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you don't have it, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2 and 10, it reads like this. For we are his workmanship. For we are his workmanship. Amen. Created in in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. The subject that I will leave today would be let's be about it yes. not talking about it. Subject today is let's be about it, not talking about it. Amen. God created his workmanship for everyone that has already received the Holy Ghost, been baptized in Jesus' name, and, to, and has gotten full repentance. Meaning, have gotten forgiveness of everything they've ever done. God don't remember it no more. Amen. He don't remember your past. He don't remember your, your things that you're doing now. If you have gotten forgiveness from God, he still have you in his workmanship. Yes, he does. Workmanship is the total package of his creation. Is the total being of what he designed you to be. Amen. Workmanship stands for everything that you are doing now for Christ. Amen. Because only what you do for Christ will last. All this giving up Backsliding Come on, for our boyfriends or for our liquor or for our drug abuse crack or for our money, houses and land. Yeah, come on. Will not profit you anything. Yep. You can't go down in the grave with your marijuana. You can't go down in the grave with your crack and your porn. You can't go down in the grave with all the money in the world. You can't can't go down the grave with your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend. But the workmanship that God every day and every Sunday does on you, that's what matters. Thank you, Jesus. You becoming the Christian or the saint that you are, that means something. Jesus. That doesn't mean you're wasting your time. That doesn't mean that you are a pew warmer. Amen. That doesn't mean, hallelujah, that you come to church because it's traditional. It's a ritual. Yeah. No, we come into church because we come in to honor the one that created us. Yeah. We come into church because he made us to be a workmanship. He made the work in us. So we're giving him the honor. Hallelujah, because he is the source of everything that happens good in our life. Yes. He is the source of all our supplies and all of that we ever wanted. He is the one, honey, that we go to. Amen. The Bible says the devil comes to kill and steal and destroy. He comes to destroy your happiness. He comes to steal your life. 
Yes. And he comes to kill it. But God came that he give you life and life more abundantly. He wants you to live the life that he gave you. He don't want you to waste your time in a script jump. He don't want you to waste your time getting a fake butt. He don't want you to waste your time getting fake booze and standing in a script jump. Hallelujah. I'm waiting and fashioning yourself for a mighty ten dollars or a mighty dollar. Thank you, Jesus. Because when you go down in the grave, you can't take none of that money with you. When you stand before God at judgment day, you can't take none of that money with you. But what you do for Christ, hallelujah, that's what lasts. What you do for Christ, you will be judged for that. Amen. That is your workmanship. That is your creativity that God has bestowed upon you. Paul has written of a predestination and God's severity. Ephesians, the first chapter, four through the sixth verse. Ephesians one, four through the sixth verse. Here to confirm that God prepared in advance for the workmanship those he, he created and who responded in faith to his son to do good work. God doesn't want you walking around and saying you saving, shopping, and speaking in tongues, doing bad work. Well, what is bad work, Pastor? What is bad work, preacher? Stand in the way of somebody else. Stand in the way of somebody's salvation. You're the culprit why somebody backside. You are the culprit why somebody don't want to run this race with Jesus. You are the culprit why somebody don't want to give their heart to God. Amen. You don't want to be the culprit. C-U-L-P-R-I-T. You don't want to be the culprit. Amen. But you want to be somebody that's a witness for God. Amen. You want to tell the goodness of Jesus. Amen. You want to tell that Jesus can set you free. Amen. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. Amen. You want to tell God, hallelujah, help me to be a witness for you. Amen. Help me to witness a dying men and women. Amen. Help me to witness to somebody that's a porn viewer. Amen. Help me to witness to somebody that's suffering from hallelujah, substance abuse. Help me to witness to somebody's mother and father that's an alcoholic and going home raping their daughter, raping their son. Hallelujah. Abusing their daughter and abusing their son. Help me to be a witness to some mother and father so they can change their life, so they can have a better home. So the children, hallelujah, can have a better life. Help me to be a witness. Amen. That's what you want to be. A workmanship. You don't want to be responsible for somebody losing their life and backsliding. Amen. You don't want to be responsible for somebody leaving the church. You don't want to be responsible for somebody that's just giving up. Amen. If they leave leaving the church because of the word of God, you can't stop that. Oh, no. No, no. If they're backsliding because they got itchy ears, meaning that they don't want to obey the truth, you can't stop that. Amen. But you can stop your mouth. Amen. Yes. Now that's the truth. You can stop your foolishness. I know that's right. You can stop your folly. Amen. You can be about it, not talking about it. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. You can be a hearer as well as a doer. That's it. You can not only hear the word. But you can put it in action and live right. Amen. Amen. That's what Ephesians 2 and 10 is talking about. Amen. That's what Ephesians, the first chapter, the fourth through the sixth verse. Amen. You can do a good work. Yet Paul points out that good works are a result of salvation. Not the reason for it. It is the result of salvation. 
That's what we want. We want God to get the glory out of our lives. We don't want him to say at the last day, after all our playing, after all our shouting, after all our singing, after all preaching to others, even on the keyboard ministering in music, even on the drums and good time ministering in music, we don't want that to be in vain. Amen. But we want whatever we do for Christ, we want God to say, Come on in. You that are heavy burdened. Amen. You that are laboring for me. Amen. Come on in my good and faithful servant. Amen. Here is your rest. There is your mansion. Here is your robe. There is your crown of life. Amen. We want God to say those words. I know I want my mansion. Yeah, yeah. I know I want my crown. Yeah. I know I want to wear my white robe. Yes. As the Bible tells me in Revelations, mm -hmm. I don't want God to say to me, depart from me. Your works of iniquity. Amen. You know what that means? Your works were full of sin and sinning. Amen. Your works were full of evil deeds. Evil that you done to people, yet you was going to church calling yourself a saint of God. And yet you was an evil worker. Yet you was a, a tail bearer. Yet you was a busy body. Yet you was in people's business. Yet you was uh, talking back to the preacher. Yet you was talking back to the elders of the church. Amen. We got to give honor to honors too. Amen. Whether we want to or not. We got to respect one another. That's right. I don't care who it is. It's a little baby. You got to respect them. They, they, they life and their soul matters to God more than yours. Amen. Because he said, I didn't come for the righteous. You know who I came for? The sinner. God wants that person that had trouble at home. God wants that person on crack and alcohol. God wants that porn dealer. He wants that crack dealer. He wants that alcoholic. He wants that mother. that's out there in the street hallelujah looking for a quarter and searching for a dime Come on with yeah, yeah, yeah. that's who God wants yeah. you are already saved and he said thank you for that but now you need to go to the street and bring me the people that's in the street yeah. out of the street because the street has no love Amen. be about it not talking about it Amen. go and do your job Instead of talking about it. Amen. We done heard that before. Yeah. According. For a verse. Of Ephesians. The first chapter. According as he has chosen us. In him. Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy. And without blame. Before him in love. You coming before God. Knowing what you're doing. You coming for God not with a clear conscience? Come on. You come, you you going before God knowing that you are fornicating a doctor? You going before God, hallelujah, knowing that you already in hell already? Come on. You got a nerve to stand before God in judgment day knowing who you are? That's a proud man and sister. That's a bad man and sister. That we go before my God, my Father, my King, the Almighty Creator of everything. You got a nerve to go before Him, knowing what He can do, knowing that He made you, that He can crush you. Some people, some saints baptized in Jesus' name. Are on their way to hell. Amen. Not because they don't know the word, because they'll be about it. Hallelujah. They're not being about it. They talking about it. Come on. They're not trying to be like God. Come on. They talking about it. Amen. I don't care if you know the Bible inside and out. I don't care if you read it ten times or twenty times. If you're not living what's in it and lining yourself up with the word of God, you're still on your way to hell. Amen. 
Let's be about it, not talking about it. Amen. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. God already predestinated what we're supposed to be. He already predestinated that I was going to be a bishop. Even though I didn't believe in what I'm doing. I didn't believe in woman preachers. I didn't believe in woman pastors. I didn't believe a woman belonged in a roster. I believe if you was a male, you belong in a roster. I believe, I believe if you wore a man's suit, you belong in a roster. I believe if you was a male and you had the anatomy of a male, you belong in a roster. But God begged to differ. Hallelujah. He told me not male nor female, neither bond nor Greek, neither Jew or Gentile. Hallelujah. You are the priest of the word. Hallelujah. In season and out of season. You got everything in your view. 
show your teeth. That man on glow side your head. Let you get crippled, lose your job. That man will leave that house and find another woman. Hallelujah. I'm talking to the church today. Get fat, man. Get fat. Gain weight, man. Don't have no muscles no more. That woman will find her another sugar daddy. Will find her another hunk. Will find her another muscle man. Hallelujah. Everything that you don't do for crap. Everything that you do, everything that you believe in, yes, yes, yes. if it doesn't have anything to do with Christ, yes, yes, yes. it will not last. Amen. Everything is going to cease. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away. Raise your hand if you saw the eclipse. Everybody, okay. The eclipse. The eclipse. Eclipse. Yes. E C L I P S E. Eclipse. It was vivid on TV. And when the sun began to emulate the eclipse, darkness overshadowed the sun. And the earth became dark. I experienced it. I watched it. You could see no light. And the temperature dropped. And they said it was hot that day. Because it was where I was at. And they experienced it being cold. Short period of time. I said that to say this. The Bible says in Revelation, Amen. the moon is going to drip away in blood. Amen. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The sun is going to be darkened and hidden. Yes. No more stars is going to be in, there, on the, in heaven. That's right. And he said, you're going to see him come on the cloud. Oh, yes. Every eye Show is going to see him. Yeah. And he said, the trumpet of Judah is going to sound. When he comes. Yes. And every knee Shall bow. is going to bow. Whether you want to or not, yeah. you're going to bow. That's it. Amen. And he said, every tongue is going to confess yeah. that Jesus Christ yeah. is our Lord. Yeah. Not Muhammad, sure not Buddha, Come on with it, not Virgin Mary, you better go ahead and preach. but the one who created everyone, yeah. created Buddha, sure created Mary. Created Allah. Sure yeah. Gonna bow. That's right. Cause Jesus Christ is our Lord. Right. Amen. So that was just a touch yeah. of what God's coming back was gonna look like. The eclipse. Amen. Sometimes God got to show Himself sure. to the earth, just letting them know. Oh, you think you came from monkeys? You can show all up. You can show that video at the theater if you want to. You can show the war of the planets of the apes if you want to. Keep on thinking you came from apes. Keep on thinking that the world is gonna revolve around apes and apes gonna take over this world. The devil is alive. I beg to differ. My Bible didn't say that. My Bible said in Genesis, in the beginning, God created. The world. And the world was a void. And the world was dark. And he pulled back the earth. Pulled back the dirt. And made it dry land. Pulled back the sea. Pulled back the ocean. And made dry land. And all the sea monsters he left in the ocean. And every creeper on the earth, he left on dry land to distinguish that the water is different than dry land. Everything living in the sea can't live on dry land. Can only only 
come out for a few minutes. Hallelujah. But everything living is sick at the go back there. Do you know why? He pulled back water from dry land. Because under the water, there's hell. Are you listening to me? Because under the water is hell. And what's living in the ocean, the great whale, the great sharks, the sea monster, Leviathan, that I preached three Sundays ago, the sea monster that resembles a crocodile with a long tail. Hallelujah. You don't know what lies in the ocean, but it tells me the red dragon lives at the bottom of the pit. And the red is trained from his head to his toes. He's trained up. But it's going to come a day that the red dragon is going to be released. And it tell me that the four-headed beast is going to be released. And it tell me that the stain of the scorpion hung of a head of a lizard and the hell of a lion is going to be released and it's going to torment men for seven long years. Yes. Are you listening to me? Jesus. Hallelujah. So you better be about it than rather talking about it. <laughs> to praise of the glory of his grace wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved God love us so that he graced us with his grace what does that mean that means he graced us with grace for our protection knowing that we're going to slip up you that have the Holy Ghost you that have been baptized in Jesus name he got grace over you because he know you're going to slip up yes you're not always going to be holy. Because no. men don't dwell with the Holy Ghost always. So you're going to fall on your knees quickly. Amen. 70 times 7 a day. His forgiveness goes out. Amen. Why is that? Because he knows there's temptation yeah. right around the corner. Amen. He knows that there's distractions right around the corner. Yeah. He knows that the devil and the spirit of witchcraft and rebellious and stubbornness lies in your mind. He, he realizes that your mind is a terrible playground for Satan himself. He realizes that when you're sleeping, Satan can enter in in the realm of your sleep. And the realm, that's the place of peace. When you're slaying, they're all peaceful. Hallelujah, getting your rest. The enemy goes in your mind in the realm of your sleep and create chaos. Create a war in Jesus. He creates anger in your heart. And you wake up not knowing why you're angry with everybody. You wake up, they sit on the wrong side of the bed. You didn't get her on the wrong side of the bed. Hallelujah. That's what the devil did to you all last night. Come on, Bishop. Preach. Preach. Causing you to fight yes, yes. against the Almighty God. So you wake up angry, not knowing why you're angry. Amen. Amen. You ought to be about it. Not talking about it. You got to pray for yourself even in your sleep. Shalom. That's what you have. The Hebrew word shalom. That's what the spirit of peace is for. That's what the Hebrew word shalom. S-H-A-L-O-M means. Peace. Which means may you experience all God's blessing. You can't experience God's blessing angry. When there's anger, God goes out. Yes. He said to get angry and sin not. Yes. He don't want you to get angry and carry it further by killing your brother. He don't want you to get angry by carrying it further and killing everybody around you. He wants you to get angry and fall on your knees and pray. Amen. He wants you to get angry and the shallow, it shatters you. What is shallow? 
the place of peace, the spirit of peace, of all God's blessing. Rafa, a R A P H A, R A P H A. Rafa, the Hebrew word, the Greek word in the New Testament describes the process of healing. One, God is the healer. How many know that God or Rafa is our healer? Nobody else is your healer. Amen. You can believe in a doctor that's good. He's going to give you a remedy that's medicine. He's going to give you a date that's the date of your surgery. But he can't heal you. Amen. God healed me. Hallelujah. Of a bad disease I couldn't get rid of. And God healed me. Went to the doctor. Doctor said in amazement. God opened my womb when three doctors said I couldn't have children. I have five sons, healthy sons. God healed me from a massive stroke. Hallelujah. I was paralyzed all on the right side. Couldn't even remember my name. Couldn't even speak or say my name. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Who that witnessed that? Can I get an amen? Yeah. Didn't even know how to walk. Hallelujah. And God delivered me. Yes, he did. You don't tell me that my God is not a healer. You don't tell me that God doesn't exist. Amen. I will walk away from you and run. Because I know that you are a person that don't have a relationship with him. I know you are a person how it comes from not knowing the power of God. But I have been with God. I have a relationship with God. God has been healing me and saving my life. Even when I was in my mother's womb, God saved my life. Because my mother and myself was supposed to die. But see, I am 56 years later living and preaching unto you that God is real. You can't tell me that God is not a healer. You can't tell me that he's not a miracle worker. You can't tell me the power of God. Because I've been with him. I know him. I know of him. I'm not talking about it. I've been about it. I'll look at you like a little boy. Oh, he don't know nothing. He need to grow up and mature. I'll go and sit down, laugh at you, and I'll say, he is not mature in Jesus. He don't know no better. Why should I get upset or angry? Jesus is described as the great physician. He is the bomb in Gilead who heals the sin-sick soul. Can't nobody heal you but the bomb in Gideon. Who is the bomb? Jesus. Being healthy is being a good witness. Acts 1 and 8. Turn to Acts 1 and 8. Being healthy is being a good witness. Reminds us, Acts 1 and 8 reminds us that we are to be witnesses for other people. People look for us to be a model of the Christ. To be a model of the Christian faith. Everybody is searching and looking for an answer. They want the truth. Hallelujah. They want somebody to be a mentor, an inspiration in their life. Amen. They want that. Taking care of, your, of, of, of our help is one of the ways we can be a good witness. If you value your relationship with God, it's liking that you are taking good care of of your body and your health. Amen. You figures 2 and 10, we are God's masterpiece created to do the good things that life had planned a long time ago for us to do. Amen. We all know that the more fit and healthy we are, the more energy we will have. You will be on a, a vacation like elder and first lady. Amen. They're enjoying themselves they're not overweighted. They're not crippled up with a wheelchair. They're living holy. They're not feeling guilty Amen. about the state they're in. Amen. They're enjoying themselves. I told them, go and have a good time. Right. Don't worry about nobody and nobody else. I didn't tell them to leave the offering. They came to me and told me I left my offering. 
I left my Sunday school money and I left the keyboard money. Amen. Why did they do that? Because they fear God. That's it. Why did they do that? Because they love God more than themselves. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. If you love more God more than yourself, your pastor don't tell, have to tell you what to do. Your pastor don't tell you to go and help somebody. Your pastor don't have to tell you to go and make cookies or make something or, or give somebody some money. You're going to do it because you love God. Yes, You're going to yes. do it because you love your neighbor as yourself. You're going to do it because you have the love of God in your heart. You fear God. That's it. Amen. You ain't waiting on an invitation. I know that's right. You ain't waiting to be inspired. Amen. You're inspired that God made you. That's it. Right. You're inspired that God loves you. You know how dirty and filthy you are. Amen. You know your dirty deeds. Show You're inspired you. because God even thought about you. That's Amen. it. That's it. Let's be about it, saints. Let's, not, let's stop talking about it. Amen. Let's be about it. Amen. Time out for all this talking. Amen. Let's deliver. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10th chapter, and then I'm coming in. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Read it, sister. Adrena. 1 Corinthians 10th chapter. 31 through the 33rd verse. And then I'm coming home. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Give none offense neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things not seeking my own profit, but profit of many that they may be saved. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Be about it. Not Ooh, talking thank about you, it. Jesus. Amen. Not doing good because you want somebody's praise. You want somebody to pat you on the back. No. Nope. Not doing not doing God's work and doing what you told to do because you want somebody to notice you. Amen. <laughs> Quit that. Cut it out. Amen. The Bible says, Solomon connects our emotions, our health, to our physical health. Amen. A cheerful heart is a good medicine. Amen. Proverbs 17 and 22. Amen. You want some good medicine? You want a pat on the back? You want somebody to recognize you? No. Be a cheerful heart. Yes, yes. Meaning, give because it make you feel good. That's why I'm always doing something for somebody. Amen. That's why I'm always throwing parties. Hallelujah. Doing something in the church for everybody. Appreciating everybody. Amen. Trying my best to help everybody. I don't care. I help anybody. Amen. The young man that came from college, hallelujah, and met me through my son. Uh -huh. Nobody knows what I did for him, That's right. but he knows. Amen. He knows the money I spent on him. He went to me in secret and asked me for the money. Amen. I gave it to him. Amen. He said, I'm going to give it right back to you. I said, no, you're not. God didn't tell me to give it to you for you to give it back to me. Amen. You go to that school and give him that money. Because I want to see you walk across that stage. Amen. One thing you can do for me is walk across that stage. And I'm knowing that I help you walk across that stage. That's enough of money for me. Be a cheerful heart. Do for everybody. Don't be a glut bucket. Don't want everything for yourself. Don't be a self-righteousness nut. Be a cheerful giver. Amen. 